Oh my god, is that coma? A coma. Dude, I feel like... Oh my god, my music's not going. No wonder. I'm so sorry. One of these days... One of these days I'll do everything right. Not today, though. There we go. I made a huge mistake by being lazy and not washing my desk mats. Oh god, come on, what happened? Oh no. Dude, Alan does that all the time too. He'll like, he'll use it for like months on end without washing them. So when it finally does come time to wash them, like the stains that are there, cause like everyone's like, if you use it for that long, you're gonna get some sort of stain. The stains that are there are like fake. I'm like firmly of the opinion that everyone should wash their dust mats pretty regularly. If only to just avoid that. <laughs> I have about 14 or so to wash now. Oh no, are you doing them all by hand? Okay, pro tip, as long as they're like the thick, like the four millimeter dust mats and you have a top loading washer, um, you can just put your dust mats at the bottom and put like clothes or I usually do like towels on top uh, and wash them on delicate and it does perfectly fine. Make sure you put towels on top though because like some washing machines, well, like, if something pokes over the top or something, it can get snagged and it's not a good time. Hey Tommy, welcome back for 26 months. Hi, Climbing Chalk, welcome back for five. It's good to see you, dude. Thank you guys so much for the subs.
Thank you for being so passionate. Anytime, dude. I appreciate the support. Dude, I bet today's so busy with streaming. Hold on. Let's see if it was all streaming right. It's gonna be nice though. We'll have like a nice, chill, cozy, small stream. Oh yeah, Nathan. And I think Alex is gonna make it. Yes. We'll start very soon. Thank you for being patient. Do you guys hear Alan in the background? I hope not. He's playing Mahjong. Hi, Voxel. Welcome, y'all. Could I request something really quickly? Could someone resub with words? <laughs> if anyone has like a, a resub pending, could I ask you to resub and say something in your message? Our text to speech is not working, but it's all enabled and everything, and I'm not really sure what's going on. If it's like a volume issue, it's totally fine if nobody has one. Like, don't worry about it. Hi Expo, welcome Kitsume. We'll start in a second as well. I was just like checking that out because I don't know why it's not working. How annoying. Okay, that worked, right? That worked? That worked. Was that too loud? I just realized I could test. No voice to text, but it said it did. God damn it. <laughs> Why? All right, I will fuck with that later. See it, but no sound. Gosh darn it.
Well, okay. I will fuck with that later. All right. Are you ready, Freddy's? Oh my god, and our bot isn't working? Everything's in shambles. Okay, I'm just gonna like address the elephant in the room. I'm sure people will ask again. Uh, I had like a horrific like breakout and it hurts really bad. So I'm trying to like do my best to like heal it up. So these are like zit stickers. Bear with me on them, all right? It hurts so bad. And I didn't want to like put makeup over it. So we, we did this today. Sorry if that bothers you. But how is everyone? How was your weekends? I hope everyone had an okay holiday if you had a holiday. I know a lot of people have like the week off. I'm so jealous. Um, does anyone here have like the full week off? Alan doesn't, unfortunately, but I feel like like his brother and his sister both do. It's kind of crazy. Oh, I just took today off. That's nice. Yeah, I wish. I yeah, I know, right? I it's like I have so many friends who have the week off. But I feel like every time I ask somebody who's like not in my friend group, they're like, excuse me, what? <laughs> hey, it's Evan. Thank you so much for the sub. I don't, I'm just lazy. Oh, whoops, <laughs> called out. Uh, Zub is Alan's brother, by the way, if you were wondering how I know his name. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so incredibly jealous. Like Alan's stuck working, but I feel like a lot of people in like California uh, and like New York have the whole week off. Crazy, right? How was everybody's weekend? Did you guys like see cool fireworks or eat a lot of burgers or did you just stay home? I'm gonna be honest, I pretty much just stayed home. I think we made we made burgers with Alan's family. We had Alan's brother over. We made like, do you guys watch Bob's Burgers? <laughs> we made like the black garlic burgers from Bob's Burgers cause we're kind of obsessed. Uh, it was pretty good. I had to put like a little bit of a spin on it though cause it was like pretty bland. I feel like usually with like, show cookbooks they usually like go pretty safe on like the spices and stuff so we had to like jazz it up a little but it was pretty good we did like a it's like a black garlic mayo uh with like just like spinach and mozzarella so it was it was a good base it was a good base it was a good base maybe sometime we should do like a cooking stream i feel like that would be really fun made some chili cheese dogs Ooh, that is a food i forgot existed and i regret it chili cheese dogs sound fucking dope Ate hot dogs and drank margaritas at a friend's pool. Ooh, nice. Nice. I didn't have a drinking buddy, so I didn't drink at all, unfortunately. I think it's like the end of corporate business calendar, so a lot of accountants have a week off after the crunch time or something. So I was told by uh, someone that the reason a lot of people get like the week off is it's just like, it's an easy way for companies to give you a full week off because like a cheap way since you already have the fourth off. And since a lot of people take it anyway, and it's like the middle of summer, so a lot of people want to be with their kids if they have them, uh, they just give it to you anyway, because that way it's a bit cheaper since most people take it off anyway. That's what I heard. Uh, apparently it's not like actually a thing, but that's why it's a thing. I don't know though. I'm not a company. <laughs> Jaeger Palms, just Jaeger Palms. Comes out here living it up apparently, my God. Hi, Adiana, it's good to see you. Just told that we had a huge storm. Dog was freaking out. Yeah, I hope everybody's dogs did okay through the fourth. That's always rough. I feel like, so I live in like an apartment complex that's very dog friendly. Uh, and I feel like I didn't hear nearly as many dogs freak out as I thought I would, which is a plus. But there were fireworks works going off. Like, I don't know what it is about where I live, but there's like, Fireworks have been going off like as soon as it goes dark for the past week and it goes off like they go off for like three hours But last night it was literally till like 2 a.m. I could not sleep 
Always rough, Ayo. <laughs> Lol. Hi, Super. How are you? Um. All right. So, shall we get started? Maybe, perhaps. Let's go. So, I got in some packages. I figured we just really quickly like unbox them, and then I just need to like loop switches uh, for tomorrow's stream. We have a bunch of photos coming up, and so I was like, do I build a bunch of keyboards on stream with you guys, or do we like get our chill streams out of the way while we can because we're about to become very busy. Um, I'm about to unbox two protos. We have another like three on the way uh, and I have two here already. So like the next like two to three weeks is gonna be, uh, probably like three to four weeks is gonna be crazy. Additionally, I will be out of town uh, like the 22nd to like the 27th-ish? I think no 26 uh so like that little like weekend i will be gone i will likely be attending most likely not for sure likely be attending the uh norcal meetup uh in that time so if you're gonna be there say hi but that's why i'll be gone so like coordinating everything around like that time being on and like additional stuff going on is kind of crazy right now so i want to do some chill streams i hope that's okay so we're gonna do a chill stream today we're gonna build our dino tomorrow and then we're gonna do, do like bring alex on on thursday is the current plan assuming he doesn't get too busy if he does we'll probably just do another chill stream it's fine or build another keyboard we've got plenty so let's get cracking i literally right before stream part of why i was late went to the post office and picked up some packages so I figured we can unbox it together. We have like the small one from Cat and Keys, and then we have like a gargantuan one from Uche uh, that has, like I said, a couple of prototypes in it. So, pumped for that. They usually aren't a lot of fireworks for the fourth where I live, thank lord. That's nice. I like fireworks are cool. We already went on my fireworks rant. I'm not going to do that again. Don't worry. I will spare you. But <sighs> I like fireworks are really cool. I just hate people around fireworks <laughs> i don't know some of them really get on my nerves and like i don't i don't trust people to be safe with fireworks i think that's really the thing that gets me and so like i'm always really nervous because there's always like some dumbass who doesn't understand that like fireworks are explosives and should be treated as such even though they're really cool uh and so like i'm like eh, usually about like fireworks around july 4th but it's nice to like watch them from a distance we live in an apartment complex uh and we're like pretty high up on the floors so we had a pretty good view tldr they're pretty but too loud i like i think that's a good point of view so can you sent over they have some new switches that they wanted me to check out they're their minty switches let me like read the handout they didn't tell me that there was an embargo date but we'll look over this again as well so don't worry about that Okay, cool. They gave me a little printout with like all the stuff that's like important about this. So give me like a second. Okay. Ooh, fun. Okay, awesome. So basically, Canon Keys is changing their legends, which is really cool. I don't think they really needed to, but they've had some mild complaints this if they listen. They are, uh, they always wanted to get it like one-to-one -one with OG Cherry double shot, uh, and it wasn't quite there. So they've adjusted it. They think they've gotten a little bit closer, and this is the first set with those new legends. Um, I don't think they are discounting their current sets with the older legends, but I do think they will be updating them to the new legends, like, going forward. Um, I don't think it's a massive difference, but it's, like, a nice one, you know what I mean? So they sent over these new switches, which I will take a look at, don't worry. Uh, but, like, the big news is this key set. So this is 9009 Dark. It's not released yet. It will be soon. I will let you guys know when that happens. You know they like to send stuff to me, like, way in advance. So, um, I don't even think there's a date for this yet. But, here are their new legends. Let me see if I can grab a set with their old legends so we can compare. But they even like, on here, gave us like a little example. So this is the current backspace. They give me like a nice little printout. You can see all of that. Um, and this is their new backspace. 
So the reason it wasn't like perfect before is it wasn't designed specifically to work with Dysub, right? Uh, so they've adjusted it so that hopefully with Dysub it looks closer to OG uh, and it'll be okay. There we go. That's essentially the differences. Hopefully that makes sense. This is like very nitpicky, but I appreciate it. So here is the new backspace. I'll pull it out. And then I'm gonna grab probably from November Fog. There's like some dust on here, all right. I will probably grab from November Fog because it's, oh no, wait, November Fog has icon. What set do I have? <laughs> that has backspace from Kenna Keys. One sec. Oh, I think uh, Hydrangea does. Okay, one second. Alright, so I grabbed Esper because I believe we use Split Back for our other. Ta-da! Looks very vintage. Yeah, so it's 9009 Dark, so it's not supposed to be exactly 9009. It's supposed to be like grungy 9009. I'm here for it. I love that someone's uh, one of the hobbyist uh, vendors is like doing beige stuff. I'm absolutely here for that. So, all right, nice. So here is Esper's backspace. And then I will give you guys a zoomed in view. Just give me one sec. So this should be this should be old and this should be new. <laughs> the differences are very slight, but I'm here for them. I do think it is closer to OG Cherry. Unfortunately, do I have GMK is close to OG Cherry. Do I have like a, let me grab a GMK backspace so we can compare that and you guys can really see. All right, so this is uh, from DMT, is the new backspace that we All right, so <laughs> old Canon keys, new Canon keys, GMK. I wonder how many people can actually like tell the difference. It definitely, in my opinion, does look closer. <laughs> I appreciate the attention to detail. I don't think it was necessary, but I'm here for it. Yeah, I, I feel like most people, like as long as the dice up is Chris and the legends aren't like totally whack, it's fine. But it definitely does look closer. I feel like especially if you look at like the B, you can tell the difference, but okay, cool. Nice little, nice little quality of life improvement. I am here for it. So you guys will see more on the set specifically closer to when it comes out. I'm not gonna like tease you guys too much. I don't want to be like, oh, look at this cool key set that you can't get, haha. Uh, but this is coming soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Which was which again? So this is old Canon keys. This is new Canon keys, and the other gray with like the blue legends was GMK. Very cool. All right, and then our other very quick unboxing, hopefully, because I don't want this to be just like an unboxing stream. This is a big boy. All right, give me a sec. Is this? So this has a couple of prototypes in it, which is why it's so big. So this should have the Promise 65 uh, and the Zoom 65 EE. I'm gonna bring that blade back a bit. Oh wow, yeah, it's a, it's a big box. I, I don't know what else might be in here. So if there's more than that in here, 
which there might be. My apologies. Oh shit. How does this go together? What's the point? Alright. That's definitely not the way I was supposed to open that, but that's alright. Sweet baby Jesus. I think this package might be a little dark. What do you think? Eyes. More boxes. Okay, so this is for sure the zoom. Very cool. I'm excited to take another look at this because it's been a while since we've done a video on the zoom. I want to do like a proper one. We did a stream last time. We're definitely gonna do a stream again, but I want to like make a proper Zoom 65 video for our YouTube. So I'm glad they sent over another one so I could do that right. Love it. Oh, they sent over more switches. Nice. I can always use more switches and stabs. Very cool. Okay. And then here is the promise. I am so pumped to build this. Um, we're going to wait a little bit closer to when it comes out. But this board looks so cool. I always feel so guilty because Utah doesn't do recycling. <laughs> like you have to like take it to a recycling center and there's no recycling centers everywhere. And because of my job, I just like have so much trash. That is a box, it is a huge box. Okay, sneak peek. I'm not gonna like open too much. We're not gonna build this today. I just wanna like look because I can't help it, I'm sorry. This box reminds me of the Xeno box. Ooh, a box inside of a box. Okay, so I assume this is... What is this? Yep, yeah, okay, so I believe this is our gaskets. Looks like it's sock gaskets. Ooh, interesting. Well, those are, these are a weird material. Can you guys see? They're like not a silicone, but not like a foam. I think they're a foam, but they're sock gas, they're foam sock gaskets. Ooh, funsies, interesting. These feel so Objective, welcome back for two years. Two, another board to leave on the floor. Look, look, look. <laughs> They're on the floor for the duration of the stream, all right? Also, don't look at this. Look, look, look at this. Don't look at that. <laughs> Those are interesting gaskets. Ooh, there's two different types. You guys know, I love, I'm such a sucker. I love when people include different types of gaskets. That's so fun. Okay, awesome. I think these are probably foam then, and these are probably silicone. Or are they just a different durometer? Uh, they feel like the same material, so they must be a different like squishiness. Ooh, very cool. Okay, I'm gonna roll these back up. Slime. Cause I'm kind of hyped. I love when people include different types of gaskets because it means that you can figure out what your preference is and like build it to your preference a little bit better. Um, gaskets affect not just like the sound and feel depending on the material uh, and the compression, but they also affect like, hold on. They affect the sound and the feel. <laughs> not just the sound, also the feel. So I think having like different durometers and different materials available, that's one of the reasons why I really liked the uh, Icky is because it allowed for that. Um, higher end boards that allow for that would be like the Constellation. Uh, but yeah, I am always here for it. Um, it absolutely, absolutely does like affect the sound and feel significantly, the gasket material. So very pumped. Hey, welcome Disasterton. Nor so lit. 
I'm glad you guys like it. I'm really happy. I need to make a video promoting the fact that extras are out soon. <laughs> we are here. We are just like really quickly unboxing some new in from Muche and Canon Keys. We just took a look at Canon Keys' new legends. Uh, they updated them to be a little bit more similar to uh, Cherry Dice Up uh, and one of the new key sets. And now we're like really quickly looking over the promise. We're not gonna build the promise or the Zoom EE today. Uh, we'll just be moving switches and chilling because we have like a very like prototype packed couple of weeks coming up. So I just wanted to like hang with y'all. That's okay. <gasps> Look at all these plates. <laughs> Hold on, I'm so excited. I I fucking love when people send me so many different like plates and PCBs to show you guys. <gasps> Wuche, you shouldn't have. Okay, so there's a plate there. That's foam. That's a PC. Did I get overexcited? Oh, no, we definitely have two plates. <gasps> Yay! Okay, so we have like without like opening anything because again, like I want to save that. Um, we have a poly plate here. We have, I believe this is bottom foam. And then we have a hot swap PCB. And then we have, I believe this is plate foam. And then we have an alu plate as well. Very exciting. Time for keyboard science experience. Dude, it makes me so happy. <laughs> like, it's so hard for me to like buy everything to show you guys the differences. So like when people send me prototypes where I can show you guys the difference, my heart goes thumped up. All right, and here's the actual board. This is hefty, chat. This is actually like quite heavy. Not like as heavy as uh, like an all brass board, but Woo. chunky cool is good. You know, I am pretty ambivalent about it personally, but I know a lot of people really love having some heft to their boards. Can we just weigh this before we open it up? Hold on. As heavy as the weight we carry on every day, someone had a bad fourth. <laughs> Wanna talk about it, bud? <sighs> I'm so stoked for this board. I'm getting pretty hyped too. Okay, so this is 311 grams. So that is, let's go to pounds. Six pounds, a little over six pounds. That's a beefy boy. Yeah. Let's open it up. Ooh, microfiber cloth. Another one to add to my collection. Y'all, you should see my microfiber cloth bar. It's, it's down there, which is why I looked there. It's, there's at least like 40 microfiber cloths in there. It's not good. Um, Ooh, this is like a soft case. Oh, I see. Okay, they sent me silver. I'll get over it. Oh, they increased the weight? That looks really good. So I'm assuming from the weight and the heft that this weight is stainless. I don't know if this is an E, like a special edition or the standard edition. I'll have to like, again, like we are building this today. We're just unboxing this. I'll have to like actually look at the product later. Uh, I will let you guys know when we're actually doing the stream. I love this little accent piece. Do you guys see this? Do you see this like little accent piece right here? That is also the same material as that way. It's like a shiny silver strip across that. I'm very here for that. This USB-C port is also giving me heart palpitations in a good way. like a weight engraving yeah this is definitely stainless that is a big ass weight these blockers have little accent pieces on them too Ooh, i really guys it has a little like <laughs> it's obviously like a little like clear gem like a little cubic zirconia <laughs> i love it Oh my goodness, it's it's not like ostentatious bling, which I appreciate. It's just like there. Look at that. Sorry if I missed your response, but are you building this today? No, villager. I will let you guys know when we're building this. I literally just got this in. I picked it up right before stream, so I thought we'd unbox these together. Ooh, they included alcohol swipes so you could clean the way. I appreciate that too. <laughs> Man, don't use alcohol, by the way, on PVD, only on like pure stainless. Dang, and like the little shiny chamfers. Do you guys see those? Hold on. 
it's like the suit uh, where they have like the polished chaffer. Ooh, guys, this looks really good. I don't usually like silver, but like this in silver looks pretty damn amazing. Ooh, I'm very pumped now. Okay, dope. Like those gaskets too? Dang. Okay, that's exciting. I'm gonna put this back away. And again, like keep an eye on the Discord. I will definitely announce. We announce our streams every either Sunday or Saturday uh, for the next week. So keep your eyes peeled for that. You'll, uh, you should have like a week's notice. How do you clean PVD boards, microfiber cloth, and a prayer? <laughs> um, PVD is very, very easy to scratch. And once it's scratched, there's not really anything you can do with it. So I only recommend, I always recommend if you buy a PVD board, expect it to get scratched, all right? Um, and again, like if you do, there's not really anything you can do unless you want to strip the coating, which you probably don't. So um, with PVD specifically, uh, just gently use a microfiber cloth. Uh, maybe some water. Don't use any sort of solvent. No alcohol, no acetone, no nothing. Um, if you have to use something as far as cleaning solution goes, dish soap and then just be very gentle. Dude, I am pumped about that. Okay, let's get this baby back in, back in her box. One sec. Get off the box. Are you using a foot pedal? No, I am not using a foot pedal. You mean to like swap between everything? No, I just like mostly I'm okay at like blindly hitting my buttons nowadays, but sometimes I fuck it up. We're getting better. I love this board, me too, thanks. I am so pumped. I don't like silver boards, but this one looks fucking dope. To, like be very careful about putting this back together <laughs> we gotta like fake the unboxing for tiktok chat don't tell anybody all unboxings on tiktok are fake <laughs> everyone takes a look first if i can close the fucking package what am i three there we go this packaging is really nice. I remember this being like a fairly reasonable price point too, so I'm kind of pumped. I will definitely like let you guys know more information as I learn it. This got to me fairly early, so. Do you know if Wuche is doing a round two of the Mama 75? I have not heard whisperings of that being in plan. Uh, that being said, I don't think, I don't think Wuche has ever not rerun a board, so I wouldn't lose hope if that makes sense. Very cool. Um, now, let's unbox. So to shake it up a bit, I requested, I believe the blue unit with the silver weight so we could get you guys a look at like the coating. Cause I believe this coating is different from the original coating. So we could get you guys a look at the coating and a look at the PVD. And again, we're not like doing a full unboxing because I still need to make content out of this, but I do want to like take a look at this one, guys. So we have the silver PVD knob, which is right, whoop, right here. I feel like the PVD on that looks fine. It's not amazing. I feel like they went with the cheaper version of PVD. Um, so you can see a little bit of texture on it. But again, like considering the Zoom's price, I can't be mad at it. Just like a really quick look. So you can see like a little bit of texture. Do you see that? So I don't think the finishing was 100% there before they popped the PVD on. Either that or they used uh, the cheaper version of PVD. I forget. I'll have to take like a better look at this, but it's not bad. <laughs> I don't think most people would notice. And it's what I would expect at the price point. Um, if this was like, so that's like the problem that the Mode 80 original edition had. Uh, and that was like why I complained about it then, but that was a way more expensive board and that was like the entire bag. I was just looking at $500 for base on the promise. Curious to see what the base actually looks like. Interesting. The one you got is $900. The default won't have any of the accents with the gem. Jesus Christ. Oh, that makes sense, because that looked like a hella expensive board. All right. 
So this is the zoom. I'm not gonna take apart this. This just has like our plate and our foam and everything in it. The bit that we are gonna look at though is the actual case. You guys have seen all of that before. We built a zoom before. Woo, woo, I like the coating on this. Okay, first off, the color, hello. So this is it obviously without the weight. I'm gonna give you guys an over the shoulder so you can see the texture on this. So this is a textured coat, it's not e-coat. I'm here for it. It very much reminds me of like the bare round one or the matrix coating. I love the color on this too. Let me see if I can catch the light a little bit better. Do you guys see the texture on there? Hopefully we're getting that a little bit. But yeah, it's like, it's not, I'm not seeing any lumps, which is great. This coating looks great. I think it looks way better than the OG Zoom that I built for you guys. That's just a piece of dust. Yeah, I'm not seeing any inconsistencies. Now, I'm not gonna say that there won't be any on yours. There we go. A bit more on that texture. I'll swap our views so we can maybe get like a little top down on it. This is honestly pretty solid. Cool. And then we have our weight as well. I'll go ahead and put our bits. I'm actually gonna move those out from here so that they don't do any damage to the board. Out of curiosity, is it anodized? Is anodized the best one can get or is there an even better than that as far as coating goes? Um, so most people default to anodization because it's pretty heavy duty and generally speaking, the factory, like most factories will do it for you. Um, it's all preference at the end of the day. Now, e-coat isn't particularly durable. Um, anodization is definitely more durable than e-coat. Um, I would say uh, Cerakote, in my opinion, is the nicest coating you can get, but almost no board offers that because that's something that has to be done outside of the factory. So they have to send it to the factory to be made and then to a Cerakoter to be finished. But Cerakote is very durable. It's a ceramic coating, so it's more durable than eco, but it's not going to have the texture that a lot of anodization has. Uh, and it might be slightly more durable than anodization as well. So Cerakote is my personal preference, but it's quite expensive. Uh, anodization is probably number two uh, for a lot of people. Now, I personally don't prefer the look of most anodization. Uh, eco, as far as durability, is probably the worst maybe second only to powder coat. Now powder coat applied properly shouldn't have much durability issue, but most powder coaters don't apply it properly. And also it, it's another one where it's done out of factory. So that's why it's kind of at the bottom of the list. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say probably in terms of durability, it goes Cerakote, anodization, and then E-coat. So to confirm, the color is closer to main cam and not face cam, right? For the board, let me see it face cam and I can give you uh, a better answer. I would say my main camera looks pretty solid. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> the face cam is pretty, is pulling pretty green. Yeah, for sure. It's way closer to face cam. I would say of all the colors, like of all the cameras, our over the shoulder is the closest to actual accu accuracy. It's just a little bit hyper saturated but as far as like the tone and everything goes it's it's pretty much there yeah sorry our lighting's kind of all over the place since i do use natural lighting so that's why our cameras are so different in terms of color sledge thank you so much for the eight months welcome back i appreciate you is this the new round coming soon yes adiana this is part of the new round that's coming very soon and again, I will make you guys like proper content on this and everything this round. So hopefully that'll be extra helpful. Very cool. And then I want to take a look at the weight because I don't know what to, s to expect in terms of like finishing quality on this weight. I do appreciate, by the way, that they send out like a proper build guide. Like, look at this. Like, this is, this is hefty. Like it's got pictures, it's got like the full nine yards, it's not online, it's like printed. I'm very here for this. That makes this very beginner friendly. Very cool. All right, time for our wait. Do, 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 do. Let me scroll up and see what else I missed. It's teal in the camera? Yeah, ignore the face cam. Uh, our face cam is pulling green because 
first off, this room is very clean. And second off, it's coming through my window uh, and like through a tree. <laughs> so bear with me there. Could you put some protective coating paint like you put on other stuff in Anodize keyboard? I mean, I'm sure you could uh, clear Cerakote it. Yeah, but anodization on its own is, is pretty durable, to be honest. Like, unless you're like really kicking around your expensive keyboard, which I doubt you'll do, uh, you probably don't need anything more than anodization. The only reason I don't really, well, one of the reasons I don't like powder coat is because that looks pretty solid. <laughs> like, I'm not mad at that. Uh, again, it does look like the, oh no, I mean, that's pretty good. Okay, this is definitely, they definitely went with the slightly cheaper version of PVD coating, but honestly, for the price, this weight is very solid. I think. This is a first impression. I'll have to like reinform myself on the prices and everything later. So if I'm way off, forgive me. We're gonna be accurate for the actual like build, but let's give you guys a better look at the quality. Look at my vent. Here you guys go. Come on, focus. I know you can do it. I know like shiny stuff is hard for you, but that's pretty solid. You can see a little bit of waving. That's again, just because they went for that cheaper application method of the PVD coat. The only, like, unless it's like a 7V or something, you're probably gonna see that. Again, that's an issue that the original Mode 80 had. I'm not mad at it for a board of this caliber. It looks really solid. Cool. And there's like that waving again, just like for reference. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Did you mention what colors would be offered besides this purplish color? So that's a blue. It is not purple, Chris. So that's a blue. Um, they are also offering a lilac. Uh, I believe they are offering a rose gold and an e-white. Um, but I will, again, like have all the proper information on that when we're doing the actual stream. Uh, like I said, I wasn't really planning on like showing this to you guys. It just like showed up and I went and picked it up right before stream. So I was like, yeah, what the hell? It's like a small stream. We'll show it off. So, um, definitely double check everything I'm saying as far as like price and color options go. Anything that's like not in front of me that I'm showing you, double check for sure. Cause I'm running off of memory right now. My memory ain't great. Thank you, Han. I appreciate you. You're magic. All of the information is there in that link, that Han link. In fact, let's just pull it up together. We'll go over it and we can look at the prices too and like adjust my first impression. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, look at that pink. It's so pretty. Okay. I believe they're mostly going with coating to save uh, some pennies here. Not sure. I think they are offering one, at least like, I think the black is Anno, but let's double check. So we are doing the essential kit. So it comes with all of this. So we do have two plates, I believe. So as far as the colors go, so you get to change your color, your case color and your weight. Uh, so you can go with EY, black, Blurple, green, lilac, pink, blue, red, gray, navy. None of those are anodized. I'm full of shit. Uh, and only the e-white and the black have the sparkling finish that you guys saw on the zoom that I built last time. Uh, the rest are all the finish that I showed you, which does not have a sparkle. And then your weight and knob, which match, are down here. You get to choose these as well. So there's the PVD mirror, uh, which I got. I got specifically the silver. We got that so we could show you guys the quality of the PVD, because usually that's where people kind of trip up. Um, but you can get PVD black, PVD silver, PVD gold, and then you can get E-white, Anno pink, Anno rose gold, Anno black, and Anno gold. And you can mix and match between these two, like, as much as you want. So you could get like a blush pink and like the anno pink, or you could get the blush pink and the anno gold. You could go blush pink and PVD, black, whatever. Um, I really like, <laughs> I was kind of torn, obviously between like the sky blue, the pink and the lilac, obviously, but like this wild green is very pretty as well. Uh, and the red looks like a really good red if you're into that. The blurple was super interesting. I, f I was kind of torn between the sky blue with the silver accents and the blurple with the, pink i think would look really good but we'll see they do have like a configurator if you want to try stuff out so like for instance here's like the faint purple with that uh 
pink that I was mentioning or like the rose gold if you want to go with that like so they do have like a configurator so you can get an idea it's not gonna be perfect it is a render but there we go I believe other people are receiving this to review as well uh, so there should be multiple like color options etc that you can look through uh, on people's cameras if you want to do that uh, and like the price uh, for the most expensive configuration, which is what I got, is 180. If you go with uh, an like the anodized instead of the PVD weight and knob, it's uh, 20 bucks less. Cool, right? Are these anodized? These are coated. Uh, uh, the weights are anodized uh, except for three, which are PVD coated. Uh, it's all labeled, but the actual like colors of the case are all coded. I just showed you guys the coat, and again, like we'll go over this properly in depth when we do the build stream. These are not available to order right now or soon. <laughs> I feel I think it's gonna be like another couple of weeks before this runs. Let me double check. Yeah, so it's like another couple of weeks until the the batch lands. So. I will give you guys 100% like information on that, etc. Just make sure you're following my socials and you'll hear about it, promise. What's the difference between anodized and Cerakoted? Uh, let me just show you, shall I? Yeah, I'll grab some anodized and Cerakoted stuff I have. One sec. So this is a ceramic coating that is usually used for guns and stuff. It's pretty heavily durable. You can still scratch it. In fact, my on this is in fact scratched. <laughs> I will show you guys. It fell off during an earthquake and hit like the sharp corner of something and that's how it managed to be scratched. But even then you can see like the coating doesn't flake off after it's been scratched uh, or anything. So it's, it's pretty damn durable. Um, but you'll notice that this is pretty matte. There really shouldn't be a texture to it at all. Now some lighter colors can be harder for Cerakoters to apply without texture, but really with Cerakote, unless it's like in effects, there should not be uh, a texture. It should be smooth all the way, which you can see is the case on here. Now an anodization can have a ton of different textures. Uh, anodization is where they basically dye them though. Um, so it can have, and, and the texture is determined by how they sandblast it. Uh, you can't get it completely smooth and have it anodized, uh, but you can get it pretty close. Uh, but this is like an anode board. You can see there is like some texture to it, right? Um, the real big difference is that because you are dyeing the, the silver metal, uh, when you're anodizing it, you cannot do white and you can't really do pastel colors. There has to be a degree of saturation to it because um, you, just, you just can't, right? Um, so that is something to keep in mind. You can kind of do pastel colors, but usually it's not like super great. It can be very tricky to do and do properly. So if you want something light colored, you probably want to go Cerakote or some other sort of coating. Uh, and if you want darker colors, then you probably want to go anodization. That's the general thumb. If you have any other questions about the differences between the two, let me know, I'll answer them, no problem. Which is the cheapest and which is most durable? Um, so <laughs> both anodization uh, and Cerakote are both pretty durable. Now, since again, you're kind of like dyeing uh, the top layer of metal with anodization, if you scrape that top layer of metal off, you, you, there's gonna be like a ding in it, right? But Cerakote is kind of the same way. I would say Cerakote is slightly more durable, um, but that's just my experience in my opinion. Other people might disagree, that's okay. Um, anodization, the thing that really like, is the cost difference here is um, you can't really get Cerakote straight from the factory. Um, there are very few boards that offer Cerakoting as a base option because they have to send it to somebody else to get it like ceramic coated. Um, so for that reason, generally speaking, anodization will be cheaper um, because you'll usually get an anodized board straight from the factory. If you get a coating, it'll generally speaking be e-coat, which is not as durable as Cerakote or anodization. Um, so I, I'd say e-coat might be, it's like, 
it's slightly less durable in my opinion versus anodization. Some people might argue it's the same. Um, E-coat shouldn't flake off once you make a dent in it, but I've actually seen some cases where it has, so that's why I'm putting it a slightly lower. Um, but anyway, that's the difference. E-coat will usually cost slightly more, again, uh, because it has to be um, applied rather than in a bath, uh, if that makes sense. So, hope that makes sense. Cool, I'm gonna put these back now, and then we will get working on what we were gonna get working on. I'll be right back. Cerakote is made to be thrown around more for, for sure. Yeah, that's part of the reason I like it is because I'm pretty rough with my boards, so it holds up for me a little bit better. All right, cool. Awesome, very pumped to build this with you guys. I think it'll be very fun. Have you tried the KDS, KDS keycaps yet? Wh who, who runs the KDS keycaps? Heard some sound tests of the Zoom 65 without foam. Honestly, it wasn't too great, but okay, I guess. I would not personally run the Zoom 65 without foam. Uh, I don't think it's very good at all. Um, but I think you, that's probably what you should expect for the price point with a weight. You know what I mean? Uh, because it's so cheap, the sound just isn't going to be there because they can't really design the sound to be there, if that makes sense. Um, without foam, that is. But yeah, I, I would agree with you. It's not my fave without foam by a long shot. Uh, but it's definitely in line with others at the same price point. And honestly, I think it's a little bit better of a deal because you do get that weight at that price point. Something like the Tiger 80, for instance, which I think is competitive with this. It's around the same price point. Uh, they're both kind of gasket. They both don't sound like amazing uh, without uh, without foam, but you get a weight with this. You don't get a weight with the Tiger, so. It just all depends on where you want your money to go and what your preference is in terms of how you want to build and how you want to sound and what your priorities are. I think the Buck and Echo or the QK65 are the best bang for a buck. Buck and Echo is definitely the best bang in terms of sound for your dollar. Uh, I would definitely agree. QK65 is pretty damn solid like across the board for what you get. I use it on assault slash hunting rifles, so I think durability is a feature. Cerakote is definitely made to be durable, yes. Thoughts on this versus the Mammoth? The Zoom versus the Mammoth? Honestly, they're really similar boards in a lot of ways. Um, I think it'll come down to layout preference, to be honest. Layout preference is the major key because... Yeah, I'm like looking at my built Zoom and my Mammoth. I really think the major difference between them is is the layout. I don't really love how either sounds without foam, but with foam, they both sound great. They're both quite cheap. They both have a knob, right? It's just going to come down to which you prefer and which comes in the colors you like. Um, let me, I miss. I've seen some of the KDS keycaps on the Kona store. I will take a, a little bit more of a look into it for you, villager. I missed something Fractal said, but I'm not seeing it as I'm scrolling. Sorry, I'm like digging for this. <laughs> oh well, I'm sorry. I can't find it. Oh, here we go. I thought Cerakote was less... I thought Cerakote was less durable because it's basically just a layer of ceramic on top of the raw alu. Now, unless your Cerakoter is like prepping your board wrong, it should be extremely durable. Uh, my Cerakoted boards are kick-ass. Are those stickers on your face? We're gonna go with yes. Um, <clears throat> my face hurts. Uh, it broke out really bad because I was pretty sick over the past week. Uh, and so we we have these on them to like try and help it heal up a little bit quicker because it hurts real bad. 
I had like really bad acne as like a teenager. Uh, and then I took like Accutane, which like mostly kicked it. But every once in a while, man. Cerakote can scrape off without damaging the aloe. Uh, any coating can. Technically, if you want to get anodization off, you have to take some of the material off as well. I mean, so like, <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by that, Oog, because like, normally in order to take Cerakote off, you would sandblast it, which is inevitably going to like remove a little bit of the, <laughs> the aluminum. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna be throwing our springs away on these creams. We're gonna be swapping out with these 63.5 uh, gram uh, Sprit springs. Uh, there are specifically the slow springs from Sprit. Uh, I don't really like stock cream springs. Uh, I think they're a little bit crunchy. And while you can totally lube that away, uh, the person I'm building this for prefers 63.5 gram slow springs for their linear switches, so we're just swapping them out. You can use oven cleaner to take anno off. I forgot about that. You can use oven cleaner to take just about anything off though. <laughs> oven cleaner is nasty stuff. Be careful with it. Guess who may or may not have purchased an aftermarket Teemo in a different color? Super, wait, hold on, girl. Did, what, you saw like you didn't like your team? Was it just because of the color? I have some pimple triggers for sure. Any cheap chocolate that uses vanillin is a guaranteed outbreak. Oh, interesting. Mine is just bad genes. Bad genes and hormones. My only qualm is the color. Okay, nice. Forgot if it was like the color and something else or just the color. Well, dope, that's exciting. Congrats. I hope you can sell your current one and like make your money back. So update on the Wuche switch opener. I have been really liking it. I wasn't totally sure about it at first. I definitely struggled with it on the rose switches, but other kale switches I've tried have been perfectly fine. So I think it was just like those particular switches are slightly out of spec. Depending on how much I like the new color, I can sell the current one. Let's see. Do you know of my brown anno board? We we're talking about brown anno and Dis's stream. Brown anodization top colors for Anno for me personally. Very here for it. So the new Hebe board, uh, I don't know if you guys have been following Hebe at all, but their new Hebe board that's coming with the injection molded clear, like completely clear polycarbonate base is coming in brown and periwinkle. Uh, so that's a board that's coming out soon with the brown anodization. I'm very here for that. Uh, and then as far as like past boards that are run, there haven't been a ton of like large run boards. The Punchy 1800 came in a beautiful brown anodization. Um, most of them have been warm grays if they've been even slightly on the brown, on the warm set spectrum, but y'all, <laughs> brown boards are so pretty. I'm so glad you guys were talking about it. The Hibiki 65, yes. Excited for the Hebe board next month. More for the 75 coming from them. Not sure. I love the styling of the 65. Yeah, that's fair. The 65 looks, uh, if I remember correctly, and I'm not getting them mixed up. If I if I am, like, call me out on it. The 65 looks pretty similar. It's like the M60. If the M60 was good, uh, the 65 is definitely like completely different. Hi, Shadanarth. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. I really want Zabumon to run Chocolatier again so I can get a brown board and pair them together. You know what Chocolatier looks really good with, though, too? And again, this is another thing you don't see a ton of anymore. Wood boards. Chocolatier on a wood board looks so good. <laughs> Ugh. I need more people to come out with. You know, I'm not 100% here for wood boards. There's definitely, like, a lot of, like, maintenance that goes into a wood board to make sure it doesn't like crack or anything and it's definitely not good for some climates but goddamn wood boards look real good has he been released teases for the 75 percent i think so shall we look together this is our chill stream we can look at stuff i hope it's good <laughs> spoilers they are sending me a prototype unit to check out so i will be able to like give you guys a proper review i really hope it's good because i love like I love the look of it so 
this is the board that's coming out in August. I hope they've announced that. I hope that wasn't a spoiler. Oh, no. Okay, they did announce it. I'm on their Twitter. Let me pull it up. I had to double check real quick. It's like, oh, shit. So here is... Yeah, so it's coming in uh, a cream color, like a soy cream color, like a noir color. Uh, and then it's coming in this brown. It's like a clear butt, y'all. It's actually going to be clear as well. Kate was showing me. And then this periwinkle color. It looks kind of dark in this render. It's going to be like very peri. Oh, I'm so hyped. So yeah, this is coming out in August. We should have a unit to review early August, late July, I believe she said. We're talking. <laughs> it looks so cool. So yeah, this is their 65. I don't know about the 75 yet. And then this is their 60 that they have going on. So I think I mixed them up. The 60 is the one that kind of looks like the M60A, spoilers. Not really, but like a little bit. And then this one, ooh. I really hope it's good, y'all. I think the clear polycarbonate bottom is such a cool idea. Um, I know the price of it too, and it's pretty solid, especially considering that bottom. I think people are going to be very surprised at the price considering. The top looks a bit like the M65. Yee. Warm gray beiges anno is the one anno color I really want. So the hyphen actually has like a warm gray. It's a very small run from the guy who did the Ayuraba. Uh, his name is Wood. Um, w O U L D. What what does he? What's his designer name? I forget. <laughs> does anyone remember what his designer is? I don't know. So if you look at the guy who ran the Ayuraba, it's the same dude. He has great taste in anno color. Um, if you guys take a peek at his green. Best green I've ever seen. Um, but he had the hyphen in a warm gray. I think when it eventually runs like a proper group buy, it'll be in that warm gray as well. Anyone got the site for the promise? Don't off the top of my hand. I hope someone can help you out with that. Get yourself a designer who has great taste in anno color. Y'all. <laughs> Underrated, to be honest. I haven't kept up with their tweezers too much because I get too hyped and I can't be living that live. I feel. <laughs> I feel. Wait, is it pronounced Hebe? Because I've been uh, saying it wrong then. So it's named after her dog whose name is Hebeki. So. And she hasn't corrected me yet when I've said Hebe. So <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Hebe. I could be wrong though. You guys know me. I pronounce everything wrong. I'm the worst. I feel like sports have kind of been slowing down recently. Does anyone feel that way? Keychron released a bunch of, I don't know if you guys heard, they didn't make like a huge deal about it, but Keychron released like their full size, their numpad, and oh God, what was the other one? Another version of their Q1 uh, recently. And then there's like the Zoom EE, the Promise, but I feel like most sports that have been running recently have been like really small ones. There haven't been any, like, really huge releases in the past, like, month or two. There are a lot of expensive boards in the past few weeks. Yeah, it's all been, like, really high-end, like, boutique boards. The tenant was good, yeah, and the foundation's great as well, yeah, 100%. I have a question. I have an answer, hopefully. Uh, what keyboard would you recommend as a kit in the $200 to $300 price range? So when you say a kit, are you looking for like, I assume you're not looking for keycaps and switches, right? I just wanna like verify there. Zoom 65, I mean the Zoom 65 EE is pretty solid. Just understand you'll probably wanna use foam with it. That is coming up, so you'll get a pretty solid deal on it. I don't want to like leak prices, but there is another like $300-ish range board coming up. I would definitely push more to like the $250 if you can, because once you hit the $200 mark, your options become significantly better. 
To keep things sub 200, you generally speaking have to cut a corner somewhere, and especially in terms of like feelers out. So, um, well, the Zoom EE is definitely like a good shout, especially if you want to keep it on the lower end of the budget. I would definitely push to like 250 if you can. Um, is the QK65 still running? It releases sometimes. I don't think it's currently running, and I don't think it's running soon again. I need boards to slow down for a bit. Just got a Space 80 extra on order last three, too. <laughs> what else would you, would you recommend for 250? Well, let me take a look at what's running currently because as far as like Insta, obviously like group buys are the way to go if you're buying a keyboard and you're willing to wait because you will get a discount on it, right? Um, if you're looking for in stock, like my default suggestion is probably the brutal boards, especially since Canon Keys I think is still running like a 40% off if you buy keycaps alongside a brutal. Um, so I would say probably the brutal is up there, but let me take a look at the group buys because that is always the way to go. That's expensive. That's expensive. Dear God, that's expensive. <laughs> oh no, that's so expensive. Okay. God, there's really not much in that price range right now, right? Goodness. I mean, I've heard great things about the Sonnet. You can get that down to around $300. Now, I haven't tried it personally, but I've heard enough good things that I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, but it was 400, so not that. Goodness, where are my mid-range boards this, like, week? It's not really a ton. <clears throat> That's expensive. That stinks. I hope you guys can't see my screen. I don't want you guys to be hearing me like saying that stinks. Goodness, there's really not a ton for that price range right now. Dang. I would say wait, to be honest. Wait or go real budget. Dang, tough luck. Like I said, there's just really not been like, my preference, honestly, chat, uh, my preference is usually like, when I'm recommending stuff to people, I do like to recommend people like mid-range boards, like between like 200 and 350-ish. I feel like that's like the best bang for your buck. Once you go above that, it definitely does like get significantly nicer, but a lot of that is like in terms of finish, etc. If you're really looking for like a generally nice looking board, you're not really into like perfect machining or perfect finishing you just want like a nice looking good sounding board and you're not like crazy crazy picky that's generally speaking the good price range the issue is, is like like it's like nobody releases there the bakaneko is great it is quite a it's it's on the cheaper end though i i do think it's like really solid especially if you're looking to try a gummy worm mount just keep in mind it is gummy worm mount so if you don't like that then you're not gonna like the bakaneko um I've heard good things about the sequence, for sure. But I, I feel like the sequence is probably, like Sirius is saying, I, I see, it's probably really similar to the Bach. I would personally probably go the Bach and Echo. Yeah. Interesting. Really quite the swing and the miss, huh? Yeah, I think the sequence, but again, like that's on the lower end of things. I think the sequence is where you want to go if you want a slightly nicer finish than the Bakaneko, but I feel like they improved the finish on the Bakaneko enough that I would probably go with that just to save the cash. You know what I mean? It just depends again on like where your preferences lie. Dang. Like I said, we're like really, really out of mid-range options right now. <laughs> Mode Sonnet for 300 seems solid and mode is fairly quick. Yeah, I think that's really the only option that's available at that price point right now. Kind of a bummer. I'm 
Sequence is a chonker compared to the Bakaneko though. I'd go that over a Bakaneko if you can swing the additional cost. Yeah, like I said, it just depends on like where your preference is. Do you want like a, just a, a nicer finish in general, like on the board? Like, do you want like more material, better machining, better finish? Or do you just want to try like the gummy worm all around? Like, do you not care so much about the finish? I think that's the real decider between the sequencer or the sequence, the sequence or the Bakaneko. I've actually never heard of anything having run through that vendor before either. Are they new or am I just out of the loop? The person who's running the sequence. Should I wait or should I buy the Bakaneko? You know, to be honest, I would say wait. Um, because I can't, I can't leak anything, but there is something very cool coming very soon on the higher end of that price point. I would wait like a month. <laughs> but it is group buy. So if you want something in stock, go for one of those, but. Thanks a lot for your help. Of course, of course. Are you talking about the EV 65 or something? I told you I'm not gonna leak. I'm not gonna tell you. Hi, Lucas. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine with waiting. Then yeah, definitely wait. Have a look at the CL65. If you're interested in a budget dish gummy o-ring mount, can I take a look at the CL? One sec. We'll do this since we're not showing you guys because I'm not in incognito. It's a CNC Bakaneko with the weight. I feel like that's basically like the Canon Keys Bakaneko though, because they have a CNC Bakaneko with the weight as well, right? They have a higher end Bakaneko available. Oh yeah, the Bakaneko, so not the Bakaneko 65, but the Bakaneko, yeah, the Bakaneko 65 CNC is 200. I mean, I would honestly recommend you go with that if you're going with uh, any of the Bakken Echoes, just to be clear, unless you want a non-anodized finish, but for $195 versus like $130, like if you can put up the extra, you know, what is that, like $60-ish uh, dollars, it's definitely worth it. Again, if you want like a, a boost in finish. I'm not saying, but I'm saying, but you didn't hear it from me. You got it, you got it. What's going on, Sirius? There were for sure some growing pains. Oh, for the vendor, for the sequence. Oh, oof. Yeah, I mean, that always happens with a new vendor. As long as they're handling it okay. I mean, it's becoming, like, running a business is hard. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, there's a reason why we have like this three strike policy on this channel. Um, but yeah, as long as they like fixed it, I'm chill with them making a mistake, but it's good for you to like let us know that that happened. Fern, welcome back for almost a year. It's good to see ya. Also, hi Caleb, how are you dude? Sequence is like 240 with hot swap if I recall correctly. <laughs> You know, I wish I had the sequence and the Bakuneko 65 C and C to compare next to each other so I could like properly give you a recommendation between the two. Uh, Cause honestly, like they look really, really similar. Thank you for editing that build command switch. Diviniki just stuck PBT fans white on black and black on white. Pick it up y'all, pick it up. I am so impressed with my PBT fan stuff so far. Uh, I would seriously recommend picking it up, 100%. If you're, if you're in the market, don't overspend. Don't buy something just because I said to, but like, if you're looking, if you're looking for a really solid, like, PVT or ABS, like, double shot set, it's really solid. I'm crazy impressed, especially for the price. I never thought I would say that about K 
KBD fans quality, but here we are. I think they're really pulling out the stops. You also get Haichu with the sequence, so GG, go with the sequence. Way better than Bakaneko. Free Haichu. <laughs> kind of not joking. <laughs> but what flavor of Haichu though? Because there's definite tears to Haichu. I don't trust anyone who gives out grape Haichu. I feel like the vendors who give out multiple Haichu in different flavors so you can choose, I trust them more than the people who give you a handful of a single flavor. I got killed by Kono for GMK Amethyst, so it's a no-go for me. What do you mean? What happened? They gave me three flavors and I got mango. Oh, mango was a god tier Haichu flavor. My EPBT Samurai slaps hard. EPBT is fine, uh, but the KPBT is like, whoo. At first glance, I thought you were building an ortho. Oops, <laughs> now we're just lubing. Amethyst is so expensive on Kono. I'll tell you a secret. Tell you a secret. We're gonna come in close for this one. Everything is expensive on Kono. <laughs> they are very expensive. Drop and Kono, Drop Kono and TKC are probably the three like highest retail markups. Uh, definitely, um, definitely. I've heard how many people are watching. I've heard <laughs> rumors, and these are just rumors, so like keep them at that. I've heard rumors that there have been some people who used to supply Kono who had to stop supplying them because they were trying to mark up over the recommended retail price that everyone else was marking up at, so. Yeah. It's too bad because they are very accessible. Like, I, like a lot of people uh, are able to find, it's kind of like drop, like, a lot of people kind of find the hobby in part through Kono. Now, thankfully, more and more vendors are moving to in-stock stuff, so it's not just Kono and Drop for that anymore. Uh, but certainly, like, a while back, like, Kono was definitely one of, like, better places to get in-stock stuff from, so it was a lot more accessible than other vendors, but... I had to order PBT Fans Basin from Kono, because that's where the group I was running. Yeah, feels bad. Yeah, I get ya. And like Kono, like I personally, I'll like keeping it 100% real here. I have no personal issues with Kono. Like Kono has never done me dirty or wrong. Uh, I like have some slight issues that they mark up their really thin desk mats as much as they do. Uh, and like I've heard not great things, but like Kono has never done me wrong. Then again, I don't usually purchase from them, so I don't know. This is all just like stuff that I've heard. They don't have a great rep. I bought Shoko from Kono. I bought a couple of dust mats from Kono. And I'm pretty sure that's literally it. <laughs> so my buying experience with Kono is not extensive. Real talk, how many group buys for keycap sets are you still waiting on? Uh, Fuji? Oh shit. I I'm waiting on a few, but not a ton. I'm waiting on GMK Fuji, Peaches and Cream Light, uh, Thai Tea. Um, I don't make- I don't have a list. I try not to make a list so I don't get, like, tetchy about it. Um, I know there's a few more, for sure, uh, that I'm waiting on, but not, like, a ton. I would say probably less than ten. Which may sound like a ton, but considering this is my job, is not a ton. I definitely am moving more towards just purchasing PBT sets, though, just because, for one, like, my job is to give you guys recommendations, and people definitely prefer in-stock stuff, so my- I'm definitely moving more toward at least in-stock stuff, and definitely more budget stuff, too, because a lot of people want multiple key sets, and you can't really, like, buying multiple GMK sets is not super cost-effective, and to be frank, most people don't need the durability of GMK. Um, I know that might like be surprising to hear from me because I think a lot of people misunderstood and thought I was like a massive like GMK lover. I actually prefer PBT all the way and Dice Hub all the way. I love having options for key sets and I'm not super rich, right? So like PBT and Dice Hub is great for me, but you know, GMK has its place. Um, there's a reason for instance why we ran Noir in GMK. Uh, and not like a cute key set. I'll probably never run a cute key set in GMK unless it's like a collaboration with someone who wants to do GMK. Uh, just because like I don't feel like that needs to be GMK. You know what I mean? Like we could do a different like double shot that's like close to being that clean but way cheaper or something else. Just because like it being almost like double the price once it's in stock. 
like most people aren't going to use their keycaps for the rest of forever, especially when it's like a particular thing. I like the sensation of PBT dice lab. Interesting. So you prefer the texture? Is that what you're saying? I much prefer the sound of PBT 100%. Specifically thick PBT. We don't talk about thin PBT here. Like enthusiast grade PBT, let's say. I just enjoy the colorways of GMK and would prefer to buy cheaper sets like nice PBT if it's nice enough. I mean, yeah, so one of the other like, we're, we're going into like the, the things that I would take and I do take into consideration when deciding who to run with. Um, so double shot keycaps, you can get more saturated colors, more punchy colors with a double shot set versus a die subset because um, the dice up has to take into consideration the color underneath and it's just really hard to get like neon or like super punchy colors with dice sublimination. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but pretty much every set that is dice sub is, is a little bit muted. Uh, when you're doing something double shot, like the resin, like the plastic itself is dyed and so you can really push like saturated colors. So really, in my opinion, the way I like look at things when I'm deciding what material to run keycap sets in is if I want something to be super punchy, I would go with something double shot. Uh, thankfully, that's not just GMK anymore, uh, but something double shot if I want like really punchy colors. But if I wanted something muted, I would go with dice up. And then if it's like a forever set or supposed to be like a really durable, highly used basic set like Noir, I would probably go GMK. What switches are these? These are creams. Would you recommend a Leopold keyboard to someone who just doesn't care that much and wants to code? Um, let me like refresh, let me refresh my memory on Leopold boards. Give me a second. If you're not looking for a custom mechanical keyboard, uh, you're looking for literally just like a pre-built, you don't care about trying different switches, you don't care about changing like anything at all. Uh, Leopold's not like the worst brand, but I feel like they've stayed the same and other people have innovated and I feel like they're just okay now. Um, you know what I mean? I feel like what really sells Leopold to me still is their keycaps. Um, but the actual like board itself isn't great, <laughs> if that makes sense. Honestly, I would say like if you want like a basic pre-built, you want everything like pre-done for you, and you don't really care, I would honestly personally go with like a poker or a vortex uh, over Leopold. You're still getting like pretty solid keycaps, but you're getting a slightly better board. That or something like the premium GK68 that you can get off of AliExpress. Those come with like really nice like dice up double shot boards. It comes hot swap, so like if you wanted to, you could swap out some keys, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I could say Leopold for the longest time was like a really solid wreck. I, I just like feel like they've been left behind a little bit, but if you really, really, really do not give a shit and you just want like a vintage looking board with pretty nice keycaps, Leopold's fine. Vortex doesn't come in full size. Oh, you left that off, Keja. I apologize. Um, hmm, as far as full size pre-builds go, that gets pretty rough. Um, and you want, I assume like, What's your budget? What's your budget? Cause I feel like, hmm. Barmillo is another pretty solid brand, but they're not gonna be as like, usually they have like more gamery stuff versus like programmer so it comes in like colors like they come in themes uh more than like beige so if you definitely want beige formula might not be the place to go formula is solid like leopold's not bad we're just been maxing for you 150 dollars because eu and i would have to ship from the us okay So if I could twist your arm, <laughs> if I could be like, can we like adjust your budget slightly? My personal recommendation would be to go with the new full size Keychron Q series. Um, I think it's like the K10. No, what is it? 
Was there like newest one? Ah, the Q6. <laughs> I would go with that. You can get it fully assembled for 185. If you go bare bones, you can do way better for that price. Um, I would go with that. While the keycaps aren't amazing, they'll do perfectly fine for you. And like the switches that the fully assembled board comes with again aren't amazing, but you're getting a much better base model uh, for that price. Um, it is in stock currently. Um, and if you ever wanted to change out the keycaps, you could. If you ever want to change out the switches, you could. It sounds really solid like stock uh, compared to something like Vermelo uh, or uh, Leopold. I would definitely like if I could twist your arm and like get you to like fudge your budget by like 40 bucks, I would say do that. Who said I wanted beige? Well, I mean, I said if you do, if you do. But yeah, Varmelo and Leopold, like if you can't adjust your budget at all, those are fine. I would also recommend looking honestly at like AliExpress boards. Now I don't know off the top of my head of any full size that they have, but stuff like the LK67 uh, or, um, oh God, what was the other one that I reviewed that was pretty solid? They have some like pretty decent budget gasket boards for like really cheap, but if you really, really, really don't care and you just don't want to fuss and you have your budget, Varmelo and Leopold are fine. I'll stick to my caped 120. Is that a Keychron board <laughs> as well? Cause they have their K series as well. Like their K10 is full size and it's like 74 bucks. And honestly, it'll probably be nearly as good as your Varmillo just with like worse keycaps, but yeah. Logitech, Logitech makes shit boards. I'm sorry. <laughs> their boards are real bad. Definitely don't buy like a gaming keyboard. The fuck? I swapped those. Shit. <laughs> FL Esports has some pretty decent options, but they mostly come with kale box whites. I mean, so there's like the um the L80, the traveler from uh hold on. LED keyboard fuck. That's not it. Like iQuinix makes pretty solid keyboards as well, but because they're the same-ish price as that Geekron, generally speaking, I don't usually recommend them. But like as far as pre-builds go, they're pretty cool. Um, but they're they're pretty damn expensive. Like, look at this. One sec. <laughs> I would definitely like recommend a keycron over this. So these are like pre-builds. They're plastic as well, generally speaking. Uh, they're pretty cool. Like they have some like the key, like I have, uh, they sent me one of these to review. I'm still working on it. Um, but like they have like really cool key sets on some of these and they're not half bad. Like they sound really good, but they're, they're expensive. <laughs> yeah, they spent, they sent specifically this one, the Lime 80 or whatever with like the Cosmic Traveler keycap set. It looks solid. Like the dice up on the set is good. The set is really nice, but, and the switches they use are really solid too. But since it's the same price as like a Keychron, I would just like DIY it. You know what I mean? I love my Iconix L80. Yeah, like it's really solid. Like, don't get me wrong, especially for a pre-built, but. It's hard for me to recommend it when like Keychron's right there and you can adjust that a little bit more. Again, it like it just depends on like what your priority is. So I guess I'll get a Leopold Ducky. Yeah, Leopold Ducky Varmelo. Somewhere in there. If like you're very firm on that budget, I would say that's probably the way to go. Maybe browse AliExpress and see what you can find, but might not be worth it for you if you just don't give a shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, if you don't care that much, don't expend the effort. Is there an Alice layout keyboard in the two to $300 range? Yes, there is. Uh, what material do you want? Are you looking for alu or are you looking for plastic? Alu if possible. Okay. Um, so there is a board that regularly releases. Let me see if I can pull it up and like double check our price. 
thanks to all of our regulars who are like patiently allowing me to like help people out here. Um, so the MGA standard, I've heard pretty solid things. It's from a place called Sneakbox. Now I don't, this is like not in stock, but extras are releasing on the 15th. So this is what we're looking at. This is the Sneak Box Alice. So this release, wait, hold on. That's in 2021. <laughs> Never mind. You can probably pick this up like aftermarket, pretty cheap. I don't remember how this coupe fight went. I'm surprised they haven't run it again. I totally thought they did. Um, but the other option is the AVA, which they also rerun regularly. Um, yeah, it looks like there's nothing available right now. Dang. It's been rerun, I think, like three times, so they should be up for another round soon if everything is going well. Um, if you're not sold, like, if you're not, like, tied to the idea of it being aluminum, um, Keyboard Treehouse, which is, is, like, a community store out of Australia, has an upcoming product. Let me see if they have a product page up for it yet. It's the um, Plastic Praxis. I forget what they called it or are calling it. I might have to pull it up out of their Discord, but it's an injection molded Alice style board. One second. Oh gosh, I'm trying to find the product page. Can anybody help me? Praxis IM. Space just sold some last week. Mine showed up today. How do you like it, coach? They're supposed to be sending me one soon. So you're saying it's being sold through space? Okay. It's, it seems really solid. I haven't tried it yet, um, but I really trust Eric's and space. Uh, so I'm sure it's fine. Um, where the fuck did the board go, though? I just want to see the keyboard, please. Space. Where's his keyboard page? Yo. <laughs> Give me. Home? Oh, it's that tiny button. Got it. Yeah, the Praxis I am. Now, this is like below your budget. I think it's like 145, but ain't bad, right? So. I think that's really it as far as Alice is, unless you want to build your own, like, Lou Brigante. I don't think there's any current ones. Um, the other option, too, is Keychron is... It sounds like I'm sponsored by Keychron. They've literally never paid me a dime. Um, Keychron is running uh, an Alice-style board soon, I believe, in, like, their Q1 range, so I would keep an eye peeled for that. Those are kind of your options right now. Mm hmm No problem. I like it a lot. It's my first Alice build, so it's taking a while to get used to. Oops, you hear that? Most people uh, don't really have issues with swapping to Alice, but it, it does feel a little bit weird, definitely. Are there no keyboards that come already built and don't suck? Not for under 150. <laughs> you're really like your best bet if you want a pre built that doesn't suck and comes like fully pre built, you're gonna wanna do that Keychron or you're gonna wanna build like buy a KBD fans one and then buy their building service. Or you can get in on like an NK uh entry like edition uh which comes pre-built with switches and keycaps sometimes but that's very dependent on what edition it is on whether or not it kind of stinks for the price there's the echo alice pro 2 but you know echo <laughs> they grow all right I don't know if I need to like start giving up on like my grudge against Aiko or not. They're releasing a lot of products that a lot of people are very interested in, but like, goddamn, I just need them to stop selling clothes, you know? 
Now looking at the $70 shipping, as far as I know, they have a, a, prox a proxy called Oblotsky Industries uh, for EU. I would check out what Oblotsky has available. Uh, he's their EU proxy, which will save you on shipping. Definitely, if you're in the EU or elsewhere in the world get, and you're looking to like buy community-led projects, look into proxies. Uh, Daily Clack is uh, an Australian proxy. Desk Hero is a Canadian proxy. And a lot of US-based vendors work with those proxies to like get you guys products that they make, but at a way cheaper shipping cost. Make has discontinued most, if not all, of their clone sets as far as I know. They still have a few time, but yeah, as soon as they finish discontinuing them, uh, we'll be able to start working with them potentially. MyKeyboard.eu, yeah, another EU proxy. Uh, if you're in the UK, there's like Prototypist. Candy Keys is an EU proxy. There's a ton of proxies. Dude, it has been so long since I've built a board with creams. I'm kind of nervous, to be honest, to be building a Xeno with creams. Does anyone remember the Xeno? Anybody in chat remember the Xeno? I love building these like archive boards. <laughs> Everyone's always like, what? Have you reviewed any of the Echo keyboards yet? No, uh, because I didn't want to work with them because I didn't agree with some of their I bought the Echo Mantra switches and I really like them. Yeah, so they're along the lines of like the KTT switches and the CIY switches. They're really solid, don't get me wrong. I do think they're marked up a little bit over some other places. So if you like those types of switches, but you're not invested in the packaging, uh, you can look at those two alternatives I mentioned and they're both equivalently good. If not, I think KTT switches are slightly better than those Echo ones, but not by a ton. They just have some more interesting springs and other things that are going on with them, depending on it. Say my budget is 200, only condition is that it doesn't have that weird ping sound. Keja, I already gave you my rec. <laughs> it's the Keychron, um, if you can swing it. That's really the best deal you're gonna get for that price range. AP, we need a happy fact for Sandy. Thank you for catching that. I totally missed it, let's go. Let me pull up my happy fact page. All right, sometimes we have happy facts and they turn out to be slightly sad facts, so let me like vet these. Did you know that there is a knighted penguin from Norway? His name is Sir Nils Olav III and he lives in the Edinburgh Zoo. There you go. <laughs> happy fact. Eiko definitely still has clones on their website right now. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I'm keeping an eye on it, don't worry. To be fair though, Keychron has some like questionable sets too, so I'm kind of like, you know. <sighs> Morals are rough, man. Why can't I just like not give a shit? I would make way more money. <sighs> Tell me it was an emperor penguin. I don't think it was. I do not believe Nils is an emperor penguin. I will double check though. Nils Olaf the third. He is a king penguin, thank you very much. Not an emperor penguin, a king penguin. That's how I feel about the Kiko clones going around right now that are like identical. Well, so the thing is, is the person who makes those Kiko clones that everyone's like sucking the dick off uh he was known for a long time and he wound up having to make clones because nobody would work with him because he made some very bad business moves like he's kind of been relegated to clones because he's done some other very sketchy shit that has nothing to do with stealing products i'm gonna leave it at that like most people who make clones like clone boards are not people you really want to be buying from not just because they make clones okay i'm gonna mute this real quick like there's a reason they make clones why wouldn't they just make their own boards you know what i mean Yes, I 
and whipping creams. Yes. I might add a little extra lube because these are creams. I usually lube extremely lightly, especially when I'm tub lubing. In fact, I can show you guys this. So this is how my tub lube stems look once I'm done tub lubing. I try to show you guys this every, like, practically every time we lube, just so you guys have like a good baseline. Uh, can I see it in this lighting? sure if we're gonna be able to see oh whatever i'll do my best so this is what like my tub lubed oop, tub lube stems look like let's get up in there like i do very very light lube jobs um so you can see there's like a very thin cut of lube on there but certainly not enough that you can like see color like you have to check it in the light right um and hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see i'm trying to catch the light but it's like an even coat all around as it should be um i would recommend doing that rather than doing a thicker layer lubricant simply because you'll run into issues um but i'm going to i think do a little bit more lubricant because these are creams and i don't want them to feel too leathery so i'm probably gonna go about as heavy as i would ever go with tub lubing and then i'll show you like the difference like this is this is for a large tub and keep in mind the amount of lubricant that you're using uh depends on your container too because you're cutting the inside of the container as well so a smaller container use smaller amounts of lubricant uh, always start small and build up it doesn't take that long to shake right this starting is probably the most i would ever use to start i'm just gonna add about that much more i think that'll be plenty that's like a heavy lube, in my opinion. Udoms, thank you so much for the prime. Welcome back for three months. I appreciate that. I hope we were able to help you a bit. By any chance, do you know how much the keyboard that is coming out for Goopy in a month is going to be? Yeah, so it's going to be $300 is what I was told. So it's at the high end of your budget, but it is there. I'm gonna mute again so I don't like murder your ears. So, side note, part of the reason I put all of my lube in like one glob uh, when I tub lube is because I can see whether these have been shaken enough that it's evenly distributed. If I can still see like the remnant of the glob, which I still kind of can, it's not shaken enough, it needs to be shaken more. Just like as another like little trick here. Spritz Springs, 63.5 uh, gram slows. If you see me dip into the other spring jar, yell at me. In fact, I might just throw them away now. I would save these if I liked them, but I really don't like cream springs. <laughs> I heard a rumor, tell me guys if you guys know this. I heard a rumor that they changed the springs and they do look like they might have changed them. Uh, since like the OG batch, but I still don't think I like them very much. The OG creams were so bad. <laughs> like the springs on them were not great. I save my cream springs. I might use them for something in the future. Yeah, do it. This is all preference based. Like heavy springs as you should. Who is it? Wuche? 
No, is it? I think it's Kinetic Labs. It's like 120 gram springs. I'm very tempted. I want to try them sometime. Are these still scratchy like the OGs? So creams are palm on palm. Uh, they do wear in over time and become very smooth actually. Uh, because the, they are, it's like a self-lubricating material, but because it's like, because of like the way palm on palm kind of feels, um, it does feel a little bit like oddly leathery. I wouldn't say it's scratchy, uh, but it is definitely like a leathery feel at first. You just gotta break them in. Uh, if you don't want to, then don't get creams, right? <laughs> Use 125 gram springs, you won't. Do your fingers have biceps? I spring swap mine. Anything heavier than 62 grams. I don't love super heavy boards. I appreciate them. They're not the worst though. Like I, my, I have pretty strong fingers, I would say. So I definitely like daily, like, I think, what's the heaviest I've personally like built in daily? I've daily the uh, 90 gram springs before. Like those are hefty. I type fairly softly and use my keyboards for work, so I don't prefer anything over 65 grams. I type really softly too, but it's mostly just habit. I don't like, um, I kind of, uh, I don't want to say trained myself, but I try not to type super heavily and like bottom out heavily because that causes a lot of like strain on your hands. And since I type all day, I don't want to be doing that over like long periods of time, like years and stuff. So. Um, I kind of worked, like I intentionally type pretty softly, but I can handle a heavier spring if that makes sense. I try not to like bottom out heavily as well. Bruh, how 90 grams? I don't know, just I don't think it's that bad. Like what, like MX Blacks are what, like 70? That's only an extra 20 grams. But I am not very picky when it comes to springs. My preferences are very slight. I usually like 62 grams, but I've been liking meteor whites with 58 recently. Yeah, I usually go for like a 63 or 62 gram spring. To be clear, I don't like, I don't like usually go for like a 90, but I'm pretty chill with whatever. If you were to break them in by daily driving it, how long would it take for creams to become pretty smooth? So I uh, had a couple of friends test this for me, bless their hearts. Six months. Uh, if you want to break in your creams, daily driving them, six months, no lube. If you add lubricant, quadruple that. Someone at the Moan Meetup had 890 gram springs. Wait, how? Hold on, how did that like not bust the switch housing? I don't think you can do 890. Like, did they like super glue it closed? Cause like the latches on the switches aren't meant to like, <laughs> hold on. Not to like doubt you, but hold on. <laughs> I thought the switch was broken at first and then I saw this chart. Oh my God. Any spring wrecks? I want to swap my creams with something a little bit lighter. Uh, yeah, so really honestly, I feel like most springs nowadays that are sold separately are pretty solid. Uh, TX, Kinetic Labs, and Wuche all have like, in my opinion, like really solid springs, like no problems. And I've never had a problem purchasing from any of those vendors. I would recommend purchasing something along with your springs <laughs> because I'm a tight ass. Uh, I would just like purchase it from wherever you're buying something else from and bundle it so you save shipping. But it, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter. Most springs nowadays are pretty solid. People have understand the need for non-crunchy springs. I'm not kidding, I do have a pick. Can you drop it? I would love to see that. They had to have like super glued it or something. These housings are just like not that strong. Unless I'm like massively overestimating how strong an 890 gram spring is, but I don't think I am. I've used TX before, but I'm out of the lighter springs. Yeah, uh, yeah, check out, like Kinetic Labs has a really solid spread, I would say. They have some pretty light and pretty heavy springs. Uh, and I think Buche does a pretty solid job too. I would just get it wherever they are in stock.
It used to be like the only decent one was Sprit. Oh my god, you weren't kidding. I'm gonna go ahead and uh... Open this in another tab here. But uh... Let's look at this together. Jeebus, that's crazy. They had to have like super glued that or something. I don't think I'm that off. If it's actually 150 grams. That's fun. Were you able to press it down at all? <laughs> you look LGBTQ-ish. I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. You could have just said I like your style and I'd have picked up what you were putting down. Now I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> I thought my handwriting was bad, but that's something else, dude. A lot of people in the keyboard have, hobby have like horrific handwriting. It's actually so funny. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these uh, and then decide whether or not we need more lube or not. It's been a while since I've lubed creams, so. That's an interesting comment. Just the way it was phrased makes me a little bit wary. <laughs> like, do I need to be worried? I think these will be fine. There's still a tiny bit of scratch, don't get me wrong. Like that, that like leathery sound. Um, but I'm okay with that personally. So we're gonna leave these as is. It kills me that the chart wasn't like drawn like a table. I think it's endearing, all right? Don't bully, don't bully the message writer. That was the first time ever saying anything in this channel. 